if um, everything has worked properly, you should see the components of the plugin right here, right? Under the category one click LCA and the subcategory one click LCA as well. Okay, so um, in this case, we have uh, this uh, parametric um, slab system, let's say here. And of course, there are different parameters we can modify to um, explore different configurations, right? And before starting with the, with the actual components of one click LCA, we are going to use this uh, geometry as input, of course, for the lifecycle assessment, but I just want to point out that we have to be very thorough here and we have to make clear what uh, kind of geometry we are referencing. So in this case, this is the slab. So what I want to do is to write actually the, uh, a, very, a very explanatory name of the geometry that we are referencing. And what I like to do is to always draw the name of the of the geometry in this uh, brep container, right? So that it is clear for later. And now it's the turn of my columns. So let's do the same. Columns dot brep. And finally beams dot brep. Okay, so we are ready to go. And now let's start defining the parametric lifecycle assessment. As, as we specify in our paper, they are, there are um, very basic steps for this process. So first, um, we need to select the uh, LCI profiles from the database. Then we are going to map this profile into the geometry from the Rhino model. Then we are going to convert these uh, defined materials into constructions in case that, of course, to, to assign a class to them, but also in case that we, ha we want to combine uh, several materials into one single material, as we were doing with the Rhino plugin as well. And uh, then we are going to run the lifecycle assessment. And finally, we are going to visualize the results of this lifecycle assessment in our Rhino viewport. So let's go for it. Let's start with the, with the slab system. And first, we need to select the LCI profile. So we get this uh, component here, and it is similar to Rhino in the sense that we have to look for our for our profiles in the huge database, right? And we have basically two approaches. We can either specify a search string here to locate our material uh, faster, or we can also use the filters. And you can see that we have this nice um, this nice uh, user interface for for my components that um, that uh, which we, whose code um, comes from the Recarama 3D plugin. And because in the end, I think it is a very um, simple and comfortable way to choose our LCA profiles in a single uh, component, right? Um, yeah, so let's go for it. In this case, we are going to, to study a, a timber structure, right? A timber slab. So what we are going to do is to go to the material uh, filter and let's select the uh, cross laminated timber here and we are going to I mean we have different materials here for for European data you can see that the filters are the same that in the as in the Rhino plugin we have different uh, LCA profiles in the database but let's go for the first one solid timber panels cross laminated timber and of course this is a generic material so this is the first step and um, yeah the second step of course is to uh, define my materials, which means that we have to map this LCA profile into geometry or into the geometry of our 3D model. And for that, we are going to uh, just connect these um, reps into here. And it is important, of course, to select the proper units. So in this case, is uh, square meters, right? Because this is uh, this is a surface. This is not a volume. And what we can do is to connect the output of any component into a grasshopper panel and what happens here is that of course it allows us to read the, the whole uh, material again but we can do that also by leaving the mouse over this um, menu but also we can see the thickness that uh, we are uh, that that one you can see is applying to this so in this case it has a, a thickness of zero by default so of course let's try to specify a thickness of uh, yeah, something something bigger right in this case 120 millimeters to start with and this has to be millimeters actually this is i think this is very small so let's uh, let's do here like uh, 260 for instance and 
Okay, and that that should be it. Let's go and you can review here the quantity, the units and, and everything, everything you want. That's uh, interesting. And yeah, and of course, I don't know, in case that you are interested, we have also this LCA container that you can use to store the output of any component of the OneKick LCA plugin, not just materials, of course, but of also the LCA profiles in case that, I don't know, you are more comfortable with that and you can even internalize this data in case that you want to save the model and you can, you want to delete this component. So now the, the LCA profile is uh, in this container, right? Of course. Um, yeah, that's another possibility that you have. But anyway, that was the second step, uh, define material. And now what we're going to do is do the, the same exact thing for the other um, components. So for the other, uh, sorry, uh, geometry elements. So let's move on to the columns. And now let's, uh, sorry, let's get the LCA profile. Okay, so material, this should be cross laminated timber. We are going to use in this case, um, glue laminated timber. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, for this one, for instance. Um, again, this is the same approach as in, Rhino, in, in the Rhino plane. We, we are not able to see the results yet because of course for that we need to log in as we are going to see later on. So uh, we don't care that much of this comparison. Later on, we can review the results in the in the web interface of one GLC. And now uh, we can even use the same profile for both um, beams and columns. So now let's map this LCA profile to the uh, first um, to my columns. And then we can just copy it and use the same profile for my beams. OK, so so that's it so now you see how we are um getting the 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 quantity directly from our 3d model right that's the that's the idea <laughs> that's why we use a 3d model and now let's move on so i have my all my materials here and as we said the next step was to uh, create our constructions so this basically means that we are going to connect the material and we are going to assign a class into it in this case is the class slab right and it is important to check the geometry that we are referencing that was the idea when we assign these uh, names here so this is my uh, slab class that's right we can assign a comment optionally so that we can review uh, later uh, yeah, where where this where this comes from I don't know uh, timber slab oops sorry and uh, yeah, the group parameter we are going to leave for, for later, right? It, it is important to group uh, different materials into a single uh, construction. And we can also yeah, overwrite the class as we are going to see in just one second. Because um, yeah, you might be, let's go on with the, so this was, the, my, this was my, my columns. So let's connect the material here. And now I want to assign the class column. There we go. And finally, let's assign the class um, beam. So in this case, we see that the class beam is not defined in this um, drop down menu yet, because this was a very uh, recent class from one HKLCA, but we know that we can use it. So what we can do is to overwrite the explicit, uh, the name of the class. So we can just use a grasshopper panel and connect my, uh, yeah, my class name here again. This belongs to the valid classes that we were seeing in the previous chapter, but you can also define a, a name of your own, right? In case that it helps you uh, keep this organized and to visualize the, result, the results later in Grasshopper. But if that particular class don't belong to the, to the valid classes by one LCA, when you import the results in the web interface of one LCA, um, yeah, it is going to go to the category others, right? So for that reason, I still recommend to stick to the uh, suggested classes by one click LCA. Okay, so I have my constructions here and the next step is to run the um, lifecycle assessment. So for that, we just need to connect these constructions here and the input, um, this can be a, this can be a, a tree, so, so don't worry, you don't need to, to flatten all, all inputs. There's no need for that. So this is, these are my constructions. And now, again, we have two possibilities. We can either um, export all my materials to the web interface of one gig LCA, or we can also 
get the results um, in Grasshopper. Okay, so let's start. Of course, we need to set run to true, and this is important that you make this a, a toggle, please, because otherwise there is a Grasshopper bug that everything gets frozen. So eventually, uh, maybe. <laughs> so uh, let's let's use a toggle for for this both uh, these both parameters. And, the, and again, as in the run of line, it is not necessarily, you don't need to log in unless you, you want to, to get the results um, back in Grasshopper. So let's say running cloud yes and run yes. So if you click here, now this um, browser window pops up. We need to log in into one click LCA, go on. And yeah, let's go. Yeah, okay. We are going actually to group um, our our materials and identify data 100% of the volume. And yeah, so here are my results. So everything was imported. And again, we are not going to go through the was through the through this web interface in this chapter in in um, depth because we have already done that in the previous two chapters. So there's an, hopefully no need for that. So these are my these are my columns, right? And for uh, they come into the category of columns because we assigned the proper uh, class to them. And here we have my um, slab and my beams. That is the option of um, yeah, exporting everything to the web interface. And also we have the option to get the results back in Grasshopper. But as this warning says, uh, the login action is required. So we need to log in and for that, you need to create a button and in this case this is important that this is a button and you are going to connect it to the login input parameter and when you press the button you should see this uh, pop-up window here in which you just have to paste your uh, username and password and there we go so we click in ok and everything should be ready it might take a couple of seconds in case that uh, the database is uh, being updated, right? Because if you log in and the database is um, older than two weeks, it will get updated automatically. So for that reason, it can take, I don't know, perhaps uh, up to 10 seconds when you log in. And otherwise it should be very quick. So everything has worked perfectly. And yeah, so this is in set to true. So we should be getting the results here. And yeah, exactly. So. These are my results. In this case, you can see that the units are um, kilos of CO2 equivalent. So this is my carbon footprint. In this case, um, 37,000 kilos of CO2 equivalent. And now this was the same as when we were getting the results back into Rhino. These results make reference to the LCA phases from A1 to A3. Again, if you want more details, that's not implemented in the API yet. So you should have to write an email to the support team so that we can implement this in uh, later versions. 